Welcome back, all my unconventional people out there. I got Jason. His last name is hard to pronounce, so he just said Jason Wojo. You've probably seen him on Instagram. He's running ads every single day. He has won lots of awards through various companies such as ClickFunnels, and he is a master at marketing. And I didn't tell him this before we hopped on, but I remember I looked at, I, I saw your first ad that like came up on my feed one time and I was like, man, he looks super young. And I wondered if you've been able to take that because I look young too. So I like related to that because people will look at you when you maybe hop on a call and be like, like, how old are you? How long have you been doing this again? And I found it interesting because that's something I like related to it because I had a call with someone last week. They're like, you sound real young. How long have you been doing this? I was like, well, I've been doing it for 10 years. I've always sounded young. And I found that as a um, a funny way of connecting with you and happy to have you on the podcast today to share what you've been doing in the marketing space, talking about how the markets are changing and adapting because it's something that you always have to have your finger on the pulse when it comes to adapting to change, especially with everything that's going on with AI now. It is what I'm seeing, and you could put some more insight on this. I'm seeing that the people who are doing the original content, it seems like they're the ones who are going to be rewarded and people who've been taking some shortcuts to get to the number one spot in Google and things like that are that time's coming to an end. Yeah. I mean, dude, like first off, appreciate you having me on. Um, the, the biggest thing that I want to preface here is that yes, they're going to be rewarded because AI, I feel like just makes everybody stupider. Um, like it's, it's a, it's a dumbed down version for people to get a lower barrier to entry. So like, if we look back six, seven years ago, what was the hot trend? The hot trend was drop shipping. It was, yo, just ship products from China, take a piece of the pie, and then you're going to make money. And it's like, you know, having drop shipping now is a lot more saturated, but it requires you to build a real, real brand. So it's kind of the same thing with AI. Like AI is this low hanging fruit. It's low attention span. It's like, hey, if I don't have any skills, then let me use AI. Um, the problem with that is that people now in the market now always think that copy or ads or anything are AI, which sucks. Um, because like, do we write all our stuff from scratch? Like I don't use anything. I don't even know what chat GPT looks like. I've seen videos of the interface, but I've, I've never even put one sentence through, through a prompt. Cause I feel like it's the shittiest thing on the planet. Um, especially like, here's the thing that, that, that I look at. It's like, look at Netflix, look at smaller subscriptions, Right. 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Like, to be honest, if a subscription's less than like a hundred bucks a month, it's, it's just dog shit. I, I just won't spend money on it. Um, so it's like, you know, Netflix is 20 bucks a month, chat GPT, 20 bucks a month. Like it's not valuable if it's that cheap. So that's why I refuse to use it too. Um, you know, you look at like click funnels and go high level, they're two ninety seven a month, 97 a month. Like you start to get in the higher price points of where things are just more valuable and they're just more eccentric for, for, for value purposes. Um, the other thing too is that these platforms are starting to sniff out AI. Like if you take a piece of copy and you put it in there, you can literally, it'll tell you if it was AI generated because all these like APIs and webhooks all connect to each other because they're trying to integrate with a bunch of softwares. The only thing that's AI do that I think is massively valuable is like just like data. If it has to do with data, then I like it. But if it has to do with writing copy and marketing messages, I definitely don't condone it. Um, and then, you know, like Zapier you know, um, automations, SMS, emails, like, yeah, bro, AI for that. Yes, of course. Um, because, you know, you don't want to pay extra money in payroll to be able to suffice manual tasks. Um, so I definitely agree with that part. Yeah. Yeah. And that was an interesting point that you brought up about how drop shipping was a hot topic six or seven years ago. And the way I see things, and you'll know more about this than I do, because this is your space is as soon as you start seeing ads for someone promoting something, the, what I would say, arbitrage opportunity is starting to shrink. Meaning there are points of times where you have an arbitrage opportunity, such as like, hey, no one's going to, I would see these videos for like people going to Ross and then seeing that there's an arbitrage opportunity to put that on Amazon to make free money essentially. Okay. So essentially that arbitrage opportunity is shrinking. And once the arbitrage opportunity is gone, and if there's no value there in terms of what you're doing, there's typically no more money to be made. So what are some things that people need to be doing on social media who are either just getting started that will help them not fall victim to 
following the trend and then figuring out that that trend is done. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a whole premise of like, like we have to be leaders and we have to be followers. So like, what do I mean by that? Right? Like in the beginning of anybody's social media journey, like you're a follower, you look at people and you say, Hey, like I look up to that person, yada, 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 but you still have to be a leader in the kind of content and the ideations that, that you come up with. So like, um, if, if I see people in the space who are changing the space, who are making good content and it's things that I want to have too, like I don't copy, I reverse engineer. So like the other side of the coin of this is like, okay, you asked, what should people be doing? To be honest, man, I think that right now is a pay to play environment. Like if you're not willing to spend money, dude, I don't care how original you are. It's gonna be very hard for you to get through the weaves and actually build a massive brand. Like if you don't want to spend money, then like, unfortunately, you're not going to be the next like, dude, look at all the biggest guys in the in the space right now, like Hermosi and Andy Elliott. Like, dude, they still spend thousands of dollars a month on video editing and posting content, doing fan pages and all these things. Like, there's still money required. People think that they just got popular because they wore a tank top and had muscles and yelled at people. Like, yeah, that stuff helps. But at the same time, it's just like you still have to put your money where your mouth is. Um and, and like, dude, I'm behind the scenes on a couple of these big brands and names. And like, dude, they're spending $30,000, $40,000 a month just in video editing. Like most people will sit there and go, wow, that's so much money. Like, why would you spend that much? Like, dude, they're running seven figure a month businesses. Like it's not a lot of money. So it's this thing where also if you're not willing to spend the money, then you're not going to get as much attention. Like all social media is right now is just day trading attention. Whoever has differentiation, like everybody has a unique marketing angle. So it's like, if you try to just copy other people, you're going to not get like, yeah, you might get a little bit better results because you're copying a good behavior, but your, your behavior still has that differentiation. It doesn't matter regardless. Um, like, dude, there's people who copy my ads and try to copy my landing page and I see them running the ads and I'm like, okay, why are their ads not around anymore? It's because yeah, dude, they send it to the landing page, but like their sales team sucks and their offer really sucks and their pricing is different. And like all these things you don't have my same social proof. You don't have the same brand. You don't have the same recognition. Like you're not going to stay around as long. So I just think that right now is a hard time too. Cause when you talk about market changes in the beginning of this pod, it's like people are taking longer to make decisions with spending money than I've seen in a while. I think people are really pulling back a little bit. The market's starting to change. The dollar is not going as far. Um, people are more distracted than ever. It's also election year. People are more consumed in, you know, um, you know, Trump recently getting a bunch of felonies and all this stuff. Like people are very distracted. And I think that the world is kind of telling us that we are going to have a little bit of like a reset. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm already seeing kind of like a change in how people are spending money and how consumers are behaving. So you mean like consumers such as if I came to you, Jason, I was like, Hey, I want to work with you. You give me a proposal. I'm just like, thanks, but no thanks sort of deal. Even no, if I have, no. even if I actually, have the funds. No, actually it's a, yeah. Like I'm just shopping around right now. I need to get a couple more quotes. I need to talk to my turtle, my dog, my wife. Um, even though, you know, it's the right solution. People are having more hindrance now than ever for sure. Like dude, like so many times where people will say in their form, like, yeah, I'm so ready to get started. If it's a good fit, we ask them if it's a good fit, we give them the invoice and they just fucking run. So it's like, that's just the way that the world is right now. Like, dude, people don't want to pay to play. And it's funny because I enjoy it. And people are like, wait, why would, why would you enjoy people running from your invoices? Here's the thing. If people don't want to spend money in the market, then I'll just spend the money because I have the money. Like let all of the wannapreneurs and all the bullshit business owners not spend money because I'll just get more market share. Yeah. Like regardless, I mean, yeah, regardless if they, if they decide to buy from us or they don't want to buy from somebody else, like I'm still going to win because I'm just going to spend more money than you. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know what? If you don't think the dollar is going to go that far, then I'm going to make my dollar go farther because you're so scared to spend yours. Like it's all scarcity, dude. It's just the way that it is. So when we spend money on ads and we push new offers, when we decide to host events, like, dude, we're spending money out the ears, but it's because no one else wants to, which is a good thing. Like, I don't want you to spend money because I'd rather spend it myself. So it's like, yeah, it's just a whole different like ball game for sure. Yeah. I had a meeting with someone and they told me what their process was in terms of how they could potentially help me. And what they proposed was, a certain dollar amount. It wasn't an extravagant amount of money, but it was enough money where 
I'm not just going to pull out my credit card and say, oh, here you go. I had one meeting with you. Take take my yeah. money. And essentially, a lot of people now are also doing like, hey, if you are dissatisfied, we'll give you your money back. However, we live in a world where it's very easy to send the money to someone. But even if someone says they're going to give you the money back, getting it back could be a little bit difficult. And yeah. that's something that I've seen as like a consumer from my like personal point of view of like, hey, like just because I have one 45 minute nice conversation with you doesn't mean I'm just going to send you $20,000. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, and this is just like my brutal, honest opinion about things. It's like, if you book a sales call and you get on there and you aren't asking the right questions, then you weren't framed to buy anyway. Like, if I get on a call with somebody, like for example, right, I, I recently hired a new credit repair guy because I like to have things for all the sides of my life. I get on a call and I'm like, all right, man, um, like, what are you doing? Do you need my social security number? What are all these things that that I need? And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't give a fuck about the price. Like, what do you need? And like, I'm a different kind of buyer. I, I never hop on a call with somebody and not buy shit. Because personally, I think it's disrespectful. Like if you hop on a call and you're just like stealing someone's time and you don't want to swipe your credit card, you're not a business owner. I know that's bold as fuck to say, but like, it's just the truth, dude. I'll never get on a call with somebody and not buy shit. That's just fucking out of pocket. It just is. So every time I'm looking to sign up with, I sign up with intent. I'm like, okay, what do I need right now? Do I need sales training? Okay. I'm going to book a call because I know I need it. Don't just book a call for curiosity. Most people book a call because they're like, I wonder what the price is. And I wonder what their pitch is, or I wonder what their show, like, like what are their emails and SMS automations for show rates? Like, I want to just steal their stuff. I want to swipe their shit. And it's like, I, I think that people are booking calls more than ever just to get info. People are info takers. They're just like, oh, let me just find out all the weird terminology and maybe I can do it on my own and blah, 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 blah. Like, dude, that's why my favorite quote is, is, is on my Instagram, bro. Everyone's an entree till the invoice comes. I swear, dude, like every time I've ever seen a business owner who's not scaling, who's trying to just grow organically, who's just like bullshitting, they they can't pay an invoice. The way that you buy is the way that you sell. Damn straight every time. Like that's one of the biggest things that, that Marshall Silver taught me. He's like, dude, the way that people buy is the way that they sell. And people who aren't growing their business and making more money, look at the way they spend money. Like it's so correlated. Like it's just... It's just funny stuff. Like the other day, dude, I'm doing this interview next month and um, I know this guy, I've known him for years. He's like, yeah, we're taking spots for interviews. I've interviewed Patrick, Ben David, all these guys, like it's an hour session. It's 15 K. I'm like, all right, cool. Here's my card. He was like, you don't want to know like where it is. I'm like, I don't give a fuck where it is. I'm going to go get a plane ticket. Like who gives a shit? It doesn't matter where it is. People are always looking for all these little pieces of info because they want to just talk themselves out of it. They're like, oh, like, where is it? Are you going to get the hotel? Um, Is it in the morning or the night? Who fucking cares? It doesn't matter. Make time for it. You're spending 15 grand. I don't care. Like, it's this thing where I think people just want more information because they want to talk themselves out of it. That's mm -hmm. why they take forever to close. They, they take the first call to find the price. And then every other piece of communication after it is every reason why they shouldn't do it. So like, how soon should I see results or what results have you gotten in my space? It doesn't matter, bro. They're all different. You just don't believe in your business. That's why you're asking the wrong questions. The right question should be, Hey, what does my roadmap look like for the next 90 days? Like, what does my roadmap look like? I don't give a fuck about everybody else. I care about myself. People are just asking the wrong questions. I had a webinar last night, um, that we run every single week. And this guy is like, hey, do videos or images work better? I get this question a lot with ads. Do videos or images, like, what should I be doing? I don't know. Spend money and find out. And people don't want to hear that because it's such a simple answer. Simple sells and simple simplifies. But most people don't want to hear that stuff because then it goes against everything they've been told, which is these complicated funnels and tech and running a business is complicated. It's actually not that hard. We've just been told to overcomplicate it because it's harder than a job that's why it's been put on a pedestal to be overcomplicated. but yeah dude like little rants and stuff that i go on about these topics because like while everybody is retracting dude you gotta fucking expand 
this, this is the time to spend as much money as possible. While everybody is just sitting behind their screen, straight up lying to everybody. And that's the play that I think is the most important right now. I'd like to get your thoughts on something I just did with someone. I met with someone who just graduated from school. They don't have a whole lot of money, but they wanted some financial advice and guidance. They just recently got married and their wife said no. And money. Wait, 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 wait. Slow, slow down. They got married. They got, but the yeah. guy doesn't have money. Their finances are a little bit tight right now. He's like, okay. listen, I want to do this in like three months. I'll have the money in three months. So what I said oh, was so like, you were you were pitching him and he said, no, I just got married or finances. He said are yes. Tight. And then he said, hey, like something happened. I need more time to get the money. So I said, listen, how would you feel if I did the work now and I'm going to trust you to pay me later? I would never do that. And he no. said, no, I don't want to take your time. I go, listen, it's a, it's, it was a small ask. It's not like a big project. So what I said was like, listen, if you end up not paying me, you're not going to be a good long-term client for me anyway. So I still win because I feel like, hey, if he ends up being a good client, because he's going to go to law school, his father owns like a law practice in South Florida and things like that. I was like, hey, if I take a little bit of time and I could help him out, it could be beneficial. Okay. So, yeah, but here's the thing that I look at for that. And this is going to be against what most people are going to think is like, first of all, you just said the most important part in the beginning that, that no one actually is sitting there thinking. This guy got married and he was broke. Okay. First fucking problem is why did that happen? Okay. Um, he probably spent a ton of money on a wedding, got her a ring, spent all he had. And now he's a man with zero path and purpose. So now he's going to go rely on his dad who owns a law firm. And he's going to go to law school because he knows that that's the backup plan. So, yo, my dad, when he passes, I'll get the law firm and I have zero impact and influence. So the first things first is the marriage shouldn't have ever fucking happened. That's the first thing. Second thing is um, if you're pitching somebody and you're going through price – you need to go from like value to logic because most people rely on those two brave like like brain wavelengths to make a decision. So I don't know what the price point was, but like let's just be upfront. Like, how much were you pitching him? It was three hundred and sixty nine dollars to do the work that he needed. Yeah, bro, that wasn't about price. Three hundred sixty nine dollars. I go wipe my ass with that. So three hundred sixty nine bucks. It's not no. It's that that you didn't give him enough value to say yes quicker um, because he just had a lot of doubt about the 360 bucks. Like if you were to break down for him, like, hey, if you spend 369, here's what's going to happen to your, you know, your financials, your credit, whatever you're doing. And this will allow you to achieve X. Are you willing to solve a blah, blah, thousand dollar problem for $369? You got to break it down for people in numbers. Because if you don't like, if you don't break it down in numbers, they're just not going to believe you. Yeah. And I feel like that's an interesting viewpoint. And a lot of people nowadays are, as soon as someone has like a different viewpoint, people like shut down versus like, I take a point of view as like, Hey, if someone has a different viewpoint than me, I like, I want to be curious on, Hey, why do you think this way? What made you think that? Yeah. Because we could have a conversation, we could disagree about something and still have a phenomenal conversation about it. And I feel like that's where a lot of people are getting stuck because just because you and I have a different view on something doesn't mean we still can't come together in some sort of capacity to figure out a way where, where we could benefit each other. Yeah, no, agree, dude. And the other thing too is like, did you pre-qualify the guy before hopping on the phone? Not really. So that's another issue. It's like, you should have called him before and said, hey man, um, on this call that we're going to have in an hour, I just want to let you know that there will be a re investment required at the end of the call. Can you make that decision today or are you just looking for more information? And that's it. And then you get the info from him now of like, okay, cool. No, man, if it all makes sense, I will happily invest. And I'm like, also just so you know, odds are it's going to be below $500. I want to pre-frame that. Is that in the cards for you today? Awesome. And are you the decision maker for your finances? Okay, cool. I'll see you at 10 o'clock. And that's it. That's all you should have done to pre-qualify him. And then you hop on the call, you give him the value, you go through his biggest questions, and then he would have been chilling. And it would have been a lot easier to obviously, you know, like get him to say yes. 
Um, because dude, people sometimes are not going to efficiently make that answer that fast. Um, but dude, on 36 bucks, yeah, bro. Yeah. That was just a value piece and just no qualification. Interesting. So if someone isn't willing to spend, let's say, $5,000 a month, is it even worth them spending any sort of money towards building a brand and figuring out ways to start creating assets through leads and funnels and social media? Is there like a minimum that you've seen people need to be spending in order to even have some sort of impact? Um. Like, let's just say I'm in high school and I have a passion and I want to start like a little business. Like, what could someone start doing to start building that up who is early to the game, yet eventually yeah. they're like, hey, I'm going to spend $100 a month. All right, now I'm going to spend 200 400 800 1600 5000 10000 Because it's a process to it because you have to, if you scale so fast and you throw a lot of money at a problem, you could be profitable for a short period of time. However, what's going to eventually happen is people are going to catch on that you don't know what you're doing or your product sucks and that well is going to run dry. I mean, dude, the biggest thing I'd say is like, I go against all this, dude. I think that people have an idea and they want to start a business. Honestly, I wouldn't. I would acquire skills. Like your business is going to be more efficient when you have skills because skills pay the bills. Like if you were good at sales and good at copy and, and good at running marketing campaigns, you wouldn't have to worry about growing a business from scratch. I would go become like, I would go become a sales rep. It's the fastest way to make 10K a month. Dude, like every single salesperson I've ever had on my team, they make 10K a month the first month. Not one person has ever flopped. It's the fastest way to actually be able to get money, liquidate, and then take that money and then run it into the business. You actually will have a pipeline of cash flow instead of making decisions because you're strapped for cash it's it's a lot more efficient that way. So I'm a big believer in just having skills. If you come into a business and you have an idea now, you now know how to sell. You now know how to write words that sell, which is copy. And you now know how to run ads. Those three things, bro, will never, like you will never worry about money again if you have those three skills. And um, it, it's always been more efficient for me, at least, to see people go that route, which is why like some people don't, like they shouldn't run a business. They should go do coaching and, and learn and like actually build those skill sets to be able to have situational awareness. Situational awareness will allow you to scale a business a lot faster, even from scratch. Hmm. That would make sense because if someone's going all in on a business and they have no cash flow, then of course they're never going to make any decisions because they're scarce on everything. And they're like, why is my business not working? So what? like, well, you have no money. You need money to do things. So it makes sense to have some sort of cash flow coming in, whatever job it is. You're like, hey, I'm making 10 grand a month. You live a $3,000 lifestyle. You have seven grand a month to start acquiring skills, hire people such as Jason in order to figure these things out. So that way you are living below your means so that your business can scale faster Rather than most people are like, oh, I'm making 10K a month. I'm going to spend 500 a month on my business and the rest of the money I'm going to go blow on who knows what. Random shit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, the other, the other thing to really keep in mind is that business has been put on a pedestal for years. Entrepreneurship has been this cool thing that everybody has pushed. It's like, oh, work for yourself, work for yourself. But like, bro, it's hard. Like, it's so fucking hard. And, and people have put it on a pedestal of like, oh, it's so easy just hustle and work hard and like everything's going to work out. It's like, bro, it, it requires a whole different person. Like going from a job to being an entrepreneur and running a business and leading people and building an actual profitable machine, like, bro, it requires a completely different individual. Like I was not the same eight years ago, not the same at all. I was a completely different person. Like now I developed because I had to, I forced myself to learn new skills, to be a different person and be more empathetic and give people the direct shit that they need. Like being that person made me a better leader. And I had to learn that through mistakes because I wasn't the best at things. Like I know I wasn't. So it was this thing where like, bro, I just, I tried really hard and sometimes it didn't work out. Sometimes, like it, it's hard, bro. Like running a business is is not this thing that we have to put on a pedestal anymore. 
And it's got to be reframed for the market for sure, because it's definitely hard as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where a lot of people I see make mistakes is they're not willing to work with others. Like people are like, I hate working with people. I'm going to run the show. I'm going to do everything on my own. That's not... If you're like a car salesman, yeah, you could run the show. Like you can live and die by based on how well you can interact and sell cars. But when it comes to a business, <laughs> you are not going to succeed. You got to definitely, I mean, you could just go on Fiverr and find people overseas to help you with certain things. Now, yeah, like, is it, is yeah, it going like... to be is it going to be fast? Probably not, but it's going to be good <laughs> and it's going to be affordable and you have Fiverr and you have a platform where if they do a crappy job, Fiverr will remove them. And the people that are working over in different countries, they have way more to lose than the people over here. I mean, paying people a hundred dollars to do something in certain countries is more than some people make in a year. So you are changing people's lives. But at the same time, people over here in America are complaining, like, why are people like myself? I don't know if you hire people overseas, but I do. Uh, well, they, first of all, they do a better job and it's more affordable because when you're starting out a business, every dollar is important until you reach a certain point where you're cash flowing. And until you're at that point, you have to be very strategic on how you spend your money. At the same time, you got to make sure you're able to feed yourself a little bit too. Yeah, of course, man. It's like, you know, you don't want to push your business so hard to where you stress yourself out. Like that's another thing to not be doing. But like, I don't know. It's like, I just don't, like going through all the pain that I had to go through for five, six years, bro. I don't really wish that upon anybody. Like the, the funny part is, man, is that I built a business to make money and get rich. That was just the biggest piece, dude. And as selfish as it sounds, that's the truth for most people. It's they don't like their financial situation. They want to get rich. They want to be wealthy. They want to have cool shit. And dude, to be honest, that's what I built a business for. Like as, as selfish and, and just weird and insecure as it sounds, that was the truth for so long. And then I realized that past the money, there's a lot more important shit in life to actually go for. And that's the phase of life that I'm in right now, which is, yo, we got a crazy team. We got good leadership. People are growing in the company. People actually care about me. We're hosting events. We're impacting lives. We're trying to influence people. We're posting content. We're doing these things that intrinsically don't give a direct ROI, but still excite me a massive amount that I had to switch my frame of mind. Like if, and like, dude, that brings you to another piece. Like right now in my life, I'm making a big life change coming up, like a massive life change. Um, and it's something that not a lot of my friends agreed with. And it's things that I knew that I had to do to become happier. And like, I just want to do it myself and learn the hard way. Maybe it'll go well, maybe it won't. Who the fuck knows? I, I don't know. But it's something that I know through intuition and through knowing myself very, very well that I know I had to do. And um, like, dude, I I'm excited about it. And I don't really care what anybody else says. But yeah, like I'm at, at this place in my life where I got to figure out other things other than my business. And that's where one of my biggest quotes is when you say yes to something, you say no to something else. And like, if you decide to build a business and you're sitting there right now and you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, like I love the words of wisdom, blah, blah, blah. Like you're literally saying no to sleep. You're saying no to like all the things that you thought were fun. All the things that you enjoy and have fun doing, those go out the fucking window. You're saying yes to going against the grain Dealing with people you don't want to deal with, doing shit you don't want to do, delayed gratification, people doubting you, your parents asking you if you're okay every damn day, like all these things that you're now going to say yes to. And I just don't like wish it upon anybody, dude. It was hard and it ha it literally changed my identity so much, dude. And it was something that like if it was up to me right now, bro, I I'd rather be sitting down like playing video games and being a 15 year old again, bro. As sad as that sounds, it was a lot more innocent and it was things that I actually enjoyed. Like I want to get back into esports. I used to be a big video game guy. I loved that shit, bro. I was top 15 in the world in call of duty for three years straight. I was a fucking nerd, but I was very good at call of duty because I liked strategy. I had good reaction time, which made me a very good driver, by the way, like 
Call of Duty and video games made me probably one of the best drivers. Like I have yet to get in accidents. Like I've yet to scrape a car. Like, dude, the reaction time I have is just stupid insane. And it made me very good at strategy. It made me very good at like coming back and, and doing all that stuff. Like it's something where it also allowed me to be in my own little world of creativity, like things that I enjoy that I don't really feel like I have anymore. So I've ran ads for so long. I've been the ad guy and it's like, all right, well, Joe runs ads. Like, you know, he's the dude that everybody works with or follows. Like we have the biggest following in the entire ad space. No one has a bigger following than I do. It's all documented, all confirmed. No one has more followers or views than me. And why is that? Cause I just went really fucking hard for six years. And like now it's about building a team and giving people like more path and purpose within the company. It's not about me anymore. It's like, it used to be about me because I was a solopreneur, but like you start to change that frame of mind because you realize that there's more to the game than just money. Like that's where I'm at in my life right now. So, um, but those same principles that got me here will not fade. So when I talked to you before about like, you know, people hop on sales calls and don't buy stuff and like, dude, time is so valuable. People don't even realize this shit. Like they, they still don't because they want to grunt work and figure it out themselves and do the work themselves and blame the market and all this stuff. Like, dude, you have to realize that you're not going to get time back. You got to spend that with the right people. And there is a cost with time. Like, I just won't waste someone's time. I, I just won't do it. It, it. It's something that I've always thought about and something that I've always stood by and people really respect me for that. That's one of the things that people always bring up to me. Like, dude, like you just spend money and you don't waste people's fucking time. And I want to be known as the guy who does not do that. Because people want to build a relationship with you more. They want to put you in their circle more. They just want to be around you more. And that's how I built all the cool relationships, all the cool clients that we work with is because they respect me. And that's something that is very undertone in the world right now. It's like, how do I gain respect? How do I build authority? And how do people look up to me? But I'm going to be honest, man, it starts with your credit card. That, that's really it, dude. It just does. And as much as people don't want to agree with it, it really is the truth because you pay to be in the room and then your personality keeps you in the room and your authenticity keeps you in the room, but you got to pay to be in the room. That's just the way the world works. Regardless if people hate it or not, it's the way it is. People started giving me pushback when I decided to, and you'll probably laugh at this. I was like, hey, if you want to have a meeting, it's $29.99. $29? $29 and you wouldn't believe how many people are like, uh, well, I." they start like, I'm like, well, listen, it's like $29. Bucks. Like, that's it. So I've saved so much time by people just saying like 29 bucks. I don't want to spend 29 bucks. I'm like, I've made the ass so small that it's weaving out those people. And I'd rather have no meetings and go play golf. Or I took my daughter yeah. to the gym this morning and we walked around the track and just like played than be on calls that are going to go nowhere. And I yeah, made I mean, the ass so small are... that is like, if, if someone's not willing to pay 30 bucks, they're not willing to spend anything. So it's just like crazy to me that people aren't willing to spend a little bit of money to acquire a skill, even if you spend a thousand dollars and that skill is only going to make you $500 back in the first year, but you're going to be alive for a lot longer. And then eventually that's going to compound over time because not every, I've learned this and I'm not sure if this will resonate with you but not one person has the answer that's going to help you. It's literally like you have to go out, find a person. All right, they have two answers for you. All right, you got to go find someone else. They have half an answer and they kind of overcharged you, but you're like, all right, I got half an answer. I'm never going to work with that person again, but I got something out of it. And it's just trials and errors. And also sometimes people are going to give you an answer and it's actually the wrong answer. You're like, shit, but at least I paid for it. So I learned it faster than figuring it out at the end. Like, oh crap, like, well, also, you just took it in better. Like, dude, what you that that's a great point because that's why I buy people's programs. I buy it to just get one thing out of it. Like, I don't buy a program and expect it to be the end all be all. Like, if I could just take one thing from someone's brain and be like, okay, cool. Like, what was that one thing? Then I'm fine with it because it, it's better than having to wait for 10 of them. Because then the 10 of them is all trial and error. Dude, you want to learn from other people's mistakes because people making mistakes for you is the most lucrative skill to be able to obtain. And that's all access. Like if I can just learn from all the mistakes other people have made, it's a lot more efficient for me. 
Yeah, people come on here like, find a great mentor. I've had a couple of people like, yeah, I've had great mentors. And I'm like, you know, I've had terrible mentors. And you know what? It's been great because they've sucked so bad. I've learned like, I see how they operate things. I'm like, hey, I see exactly how not to operate a business. Otherwise, I'm going to end like end up like this person at 46 years old. And I'm going to go through what they're experiencing. And when that time is gone, it is gone forever. Like you're only, this is the oldest and the youngest we will ever be is on this podcast right now while we're recording this. And yeah. ultimately I'm doing a webinar next, next week. And the, the phrase I end people with, I go, listen, man, money's infinite. They, they'll, they make more of it. They literally make more money. So people, as you get dollars, like if you're getting 10 grand a month, and you're like, I'm good. Well, that 10 grand a month is going to be worth five grand a month, three grand a month, if you're not scaling and growing your enterprise. But the time is finite. It's gone forever. You're never getting it back. True. So I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of people, they worry about the wrong things. Like I met with an investor and I asked him, I was like, how much money did you make? He's like, I don't know. I made enough to end up in Boca. I'm happy with that. He didn't he didn't worry about his returns. He didn't worry about how much he has. Like, I made enough to end up here and I'm happy about it. And people get too caught up in the numbers because when you get caught up in the numbers, that's when you end up making poor decisions and going, I gotta change this, I gotta change that, versus like, hey, you could be doing the right thing, but maybe you're not seeing the gains just because you haven't got enough time yet. I mean, dude, it's but what it's... do I know? <laughs> I mean, dude, that's, that's a great point. Um, I mean, you, it's like high school kids cheated. They got into better schools than me. And then I look back, I'm like, what job are they working? Okay. It caught up with them. You saw people in, in college, super big in the gym, did steroids. I look at them now. I'm like, they don't look so hot anymore. I mean, see these people on social media. I'm like, yeah, they're definitely taking things. I'm like, I want to see them in 10 years. I'm like, I'm putting a mark in 10 years, seeing where they're at. And Dude, man, it's also funny. Like when I was in high school, I was probably one of the most picked on kids and all the people who were jocks or like played sports and were like really fucking popular. Like, dude, they're all following me now on social, rooting me on. And I'm like, bro, you didn't invite me to shit in high school. Like you couldn't just look past the fact that I was short and had a squeaky voice and like you couldn't just hang out with me. But I was a good person. Dude, it's the same thing with like... Uh, this is a weird topic, but like, dude, the same thing with women, bro. The thing I've realized recently is that women like the asshole. They just do. And you know how they always say good guys finish last? It's because women have to go through all of the bullshit first. All the guys who were not successful, had no path and purpose, no impact and influence, had to go through all of those guys first to then finally let the good guy finish last. Because, dude, at the end of the day, dude, women, they want to be provided for them. Well, they want to be protected for. But things they say, they say one thing and mean another. And the good guy is what they wanted the whole time, but they just wanted to have fun. And they thought it was really just like – it was sporadic and it was enticing and it was just like hot, dude. It was it was fun for them to, to go through all the bullshit and baggage first. And it's the same thing with when, when people are running a business or they're – spending money in X place or they're moving somewhere. They tell themselves this ideology that is only true because they're just curious as fuck when they just know the actual truth, but don't want to face it because they like being lied to. Like, dude, look at relationships at, at, at a very key level. Why do 70% of marriages fail? Because they're just not willing to sit down and tell each other the fucking truth because the truth hurts and it sucks and they have to face it. So let's just like, not tell our partners the truth. And then they're going to find out the answer later on. It's going to fuck us up even more, but it was worth waiting on because we still got to have the frisk, like have sex and the friskiness and all these things. Like we still got to enjoy the banter and, and all the high energy moments, but like, dude, it ended in a complete shit show. It, it's, it, it's crazy, bro. But i am always been a firm believer just giving people the truth and being direct because I'd rather do that than let people be lied to. I hate that. Like, I want people to tell me the truth. Like, I want people to tell me, hey, man, like that podcast you did was good. Or, hey, man, it wasn't good. Or, hey, man, you shouldn't have said this. Like, I want people to tell me that. I don't want people just to tell me things just to tell me things to make me feel good about myself. 
I don't need that. I already feel good. I just want the truth, bro, because the truth will set you free in any phase in life. The truth will always win and the truth will always set you free. And I've always believed in that. You made a good point. And anyone out there who may be struggling because they aren't the popular person. It's actually a superpower because you learn, and I know this because I was like you, you learn to just be by yourself and to figure out things to get you to where you want to go faster than everyone else. And you have to overcome that obstacle, such as people saying the wrong things to you and being mean to you and knowing how to switch that on its head and make it like a joke. And then they're like, oh, that's that was a good one, Jason, or haha. And then you just move on with your day. And then eventually you were so nice to everyone and you had such a good reputation. Once you surpass everyone, those people start coming back and like, I like Jason. I like Josh in high school. He was always nice and now he's doing good and I need his help with something. It's crazy how people just come out of the woodworks randomly. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, being nice or being like a real person actually paid off in the end and it will continue to pay off in the end. But you're going to have to go through some pain to get there because ultimately the people taking shortcuts for the short-term wins eventually lose and they lose yeah. ginormously. Yeah. And like, you know, dude, like this, it's this premise of also like, yeah, they, they want the fast shit, but you have to realize that before you even want fast or long game stuff, you still have to actually pack your own identity before you take those actions. So like, what do I mean by that? Whatever your true identity is, will also set you free, but make sure that you actually map your actions to what you're, wh who you are as a person. So like, if I have always in my life been a very long game person, then my business will be the same way. But if my whole childhood was making sure shit was done fast or things were done quick, 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 quick. Now my identity is wrapped in making sure that things are done very, very quickly, which then is a lack of quality, which is just about quantity. And it's like, you wrap your identity in those childhood behaviors, in your exposures, in your environments, in the people that you hang out with and the decisions that you make. And it's like people can go back and forth all day with me about, oh, like, you know, you say really direct shit online. You say bold things. People don't like you. Dude, you can like me or hate me, but the shit I say is the truth and you just can't handle it. Right. I could tell you, hey, we were running this funnel for three months. It's not working out. Okay. It's only three months. Is your salesperson shit? Is your offer not good or all these things? No, dude, the ads, the ads, the ads. No, it's not the fucking ad. You're looking at it the wrong way. Like, stop. And people don't want to hear that because now I'm telling you to change your business and it requires work and requires pivoting and you're just too fucking lazy to do the work. People don't want to hear it. So that's why like, and a lot of people like having me on podcasts because I do get a lot of views because the shit that I say and it's exciting and it's funny. But like, dude, the things I say are not for views. It's because it's a fucking truth. But no one wants to say it. Or people will say to me, oh, dude, you should stop cursing as much. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. Because if I can't deliver in a way that's authentic to me, then it's like, what's the point of me speaking on the topic? You know, like people know what they're getting themselves into when they ask me to come on a podcast. They know. They're very aware. I feel like you were aware too. Like, dude, everybody's aware. I'm very controversial. And it's what kind of sets me apart and allows me to get views and allows me to stay transparent to actually like my identity and my, and my messaging. And also dude, like the point goes back to everything before. Look at the news, dude. Look at all the shit in the world. Are people attracted to good or are they attracted to controversy? Like they're attracted to controversy. No one ever sat in front of their TV, watched the news and texted their friend about all the good shit that they heard. They went on the news and said, yo, did you hear about that guy that fell from a tree? Or did you hear about that guy that got in an accident on the freeway? Like, no one's talking about positive shit. So you might as well join the bandwagon. It's like, dude, I can sit here and I can positively spew things into your head and say, yo, here's what you should think. You should be hustling, blah, blah, blah. But like, dude, to be honest, most people are going to do it, fail once, talk shit, be negative, and they lose. Because they can't push through because they're just spewed negative stuff all day long. And it's like, there was one message that I really took from Gary V like a really long time ago. He made this really awesome video that you should definitely watch. Um, if you go on YouTube and search 2017 documentary, Gary V very long time ago, he made this awesome documentary video where at the end of the video, he says probably the most important shit that people don't want to hear, which is 
My goal for you is that I honestly love that I built an audience, but my goal is that I actually never want you to watch my content again. You go on Instagram and you hear all my rah-rah every single day. Like my goal is that you never watch me again after one video. I want you to take what I'm telling you and go do it. But the problem is, is that you want the motivational rah-rah. You want the legacy and hustle and patience every day in your face. And like, you just don't want to do anything about it because you're scared because you're scared of what other people think. And that message always hit me. And that's why I don't watch Gary Vee anymore. Like I stopped watching Gary V after I started making money because all the stuff that he talks about is to get you just to start making money. But once you like get off the ground, you realize that there's nothing tactical that he talks about anymore. So all the people who engage with this content, comment and share his stuff, they don't make any money because they're so spewed into the motivation, 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 motivation. Like, dude, get off your fucking ass and do something. Like you could hear about the motivation all day, but it's not going to pay your bills. Like, dude, motivate yourself, your household, your team, your customers, your environment, your ecosystem, and your community. That's who you need to motivate. You need to become a leader first before you do that. But just hearing it all day long, it's like, it's like, oh, wake up at 6 a.m. Like, why do I have to wake up at 6 a.m.? Who the fuck told you that you have to wake up early to make more money? Or who told you that you got to get into a cold plunge or go into the sauna or like read a script for everyone? Like who told you these things? <laughs> Someone who it worked for, but isn't you. Warren, Warren Buffett eats McDonald's and drinks Coke all day. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. And he is richer than all of these people you're seeing on social media. Yeah. And, and the cool like... part about Warren Buffett people don't know about is, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They feel like I need to be a business owner to grow wealth. And Warren Buffett said, the reason I invest in companies is because starting a business is too hard. So why should I do that when I could just put money into something and then just let it compound over time, take advantage of the buying opportunity, which I run into these business owners who, you know, sell their companies for 20, 30 million, they get a bunch of money. And then they're like, what do I do now? Versus the people who are buying the company are like, hey, this company is worth 100 mil. And this person just sold it for me for 20, man. It's pretty crazy. and. I agree with what you're saying is you can't just be motivated. You have to actually do the work, eat the eat the shit sandwich and get at it and never stop. And once you become a business owner, you will find out who your real friends are. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's like the friends that I have when I first started are not the friends that I have now. Right. And it's the same thing with everything else. Like, dude, you'll find people who are your friends in middle school and they're, and they're, and they're not going to be your friends after you leave high school. And it's like, you're going to have business partners that you decide to work with. And then three years down the road, do they decide to get married and have fucking kids? And then you don't really hang out with them anymore. And then all of a sudden you are on a different path. And it's like, you have to find new people for, for a new season. Like there's always seasons in everybody's life that, that they have to go through. Like I'm in a weird season right now. Like I'm not going to announce shit yet, but like, this is a new season for me. I'm going against so many things over these next 30 days. My life is just going to completely fucking change. And it's exciting, but it's a new season for me. And I'm excited about it because I get to do it on my terms. My 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 whole life has been, um, I, I, I this is a really good thing for people to understand is that the place in my life that I'm in right now is two places, is leading and hosting. And what does that mean, right? I was talking to one of my friends the other day and she was like, yeah, you always seem to be the host. And like, like, dude, everything that I've always done in my life, every fucking dinner, every fucking event, every fucking thing that we do, I'm always the one paying for it because it's my duty as a leader is to host. But I'm at this place in my life now where I'm kind of tired of it. I'm exhausted. And it's like, dude, I want to do what the fuck I want to do. Like, I want to be able to wake up in the morning and be like, yo, I have zero obligation to anybody today. <laughs> zero. And it's not that I'm against people, okay? It's not that I'm not a nice person, but dude, when you do it for five years straight, you realize like, holy fuck, dude, this is exhausting, right? Like um, when I want to get people together for the boat, I have to worry about this fucking person who's got a weird skin problem. And like this person needs suntan lotion. That person doesn't drink neutrals. They drink fucking white claws. And like, I don't give a fuck about any of that anymore. I want to do something that I want to do, right? 
I want to go on the boat and be like, I like Stella's. I'm going to have a Stella. Anybody else? Oh, wait, shit, there's nobody. All right, cool. I don't have to worry about nothing else. Or the people who are like, oh, I'm hungry. Can we get off the boat sooner? No. Okay, I can go on the boat and bring my own fucking cheeseburger myself. I don't need to worry about what everybody else is up to. And that's kind of the, the season of my life that I'm in is like, dude, what do I enjoy? Like, I'm starting to go to the gym now. Like, holy crap, bro. Like, I never went to the gym and I'm starting to go because it's actually pretty fun. I like it. And it's somewhere where I can put my headphones on and just listen to music and, and rant to myself and just like get some energy out and actually like improve my body and my health, which is cool. Um, and like traveling too, like dude, for the longest time, I always travel with, with other people. Okay. What does that come with? So much bullshit. I can't begin to describe you land. When is he landing? Do we got to come pick him up? Who's getting the car rental? Uh, what's the code for the Airbnb? What's the Wi-Fi? Fucking okay. That's all done. We get to the Airbnb whose bedrooms and what who's sleeping with who, um, where are we going to dinner? Uh, are you guys ready yet? You got to get dressed. You got to change. Oh, you need the steamer? Like, dude, I am done, bro. I want to just go out and eat by myself. Um, Yeah, bro. That's the phase and season of my life that I'm in. And I deserve that because I made my money and that's it. Like, I want to have fun. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Jason, appreciate having you on the Unconventional Money po Moves podcast. Everyone knows where to find Jason. It's very sure. easy to find him. And we'll see everyone next time. Bye.